Hi, this is Barry C. Paul coming to you at YouTube. And uh, today I'm drawing dinky pictures. I call them dinkies because they're so small. I've never drawn anything this small before, but let me tell you what they are. These are my celestial creatures. I keep calling them celestial creatures, but they, 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 they like to be called, referred to as celestial beings because they are beings. They're, so they're celestial beings. But I always take them as celestial creatures because that's how I, I first thought them when I first discovered them. Oh, anyway. There are various forms of them. They all have one thing in common. They're celestial. They're, they're star creatures. They travel between time, space, and dimension between the stars. They're, they're very never, hardly ever in this dimension where we call earthly dimensions because there's nothing in this dimension that they feel, figure it's not, not that they say it's not worth coming to it. It's simply that they figure that coming to this dimension they might cause damage and harm because of their capabilities and their power because they're ultra-dense creatures like wormhole theories and string theory and all that that's how these creatures are composed they're, they travel between all these stuff and they're composed of something that's so dense for their for their species that coming to their planet could be kind of disastrous so anyway there are these are a couple of my friends here they're, this is my uh, this is one I always keep her eye on me she, I mean she's she is always talking to me about the fact that she um watches watches over me and she she prides herself on that you know, they're all, they all watch me in, in, in a sense, but they all have their own special, unique catchphrase kind of a thing. And I, I always tell her she has, I'm, and, and this is the one that it embarrassed me because I told Bill about it, but I'm not going to tell you about it. But anyway, she says, says things that totally embarrass me because of the things she says. It's not that she says horrible things, it's simply that the things she says, is like, let me give you an example. If you were ever a child and your mama put you on the bearskin rug naked with your little butt sticking up, that was probably what was your most embarrassing picture you ever made. And then when you grow up, you never knew about it because you were a child. But when you grew up and then you see that picture in a photo album, you might do like, Hoi! Dutch, huh? <laughs> what? Why'd you burn that picture? It's the kind of thing this creature does. She says things that she means as kind, kind of as, as emotionally feelings. But to me, they're kind of, kind of embarrassing because I would never say them out in public because People would laugh, not, not that because um, it, it's, it's horrible or it's not nice, it's simply that it's so funny coming from a creature that supposedly travels between the stars and planets, like these do, that say this to a, to a human being. But anyway, um, I'm doing these little dinky ones because I hear that there's a big need for dinkies, so I'm going to do you some dinky celestial creatures, beings. And, and draw, draw, uh, try to put all of them into small miniature form for you to have for your own collections. There's, I mean, I can't say how many there is because there's no number, there's no limit to the number there could be. I mean, each time I look in my cerebral cortex, as I call it, I mean, you know what the cerebral cortex, that's your mind, that's the part of your brain that hooks synapses and all this kind of stuff and fires these little synapses thing to create knowledge, information, and stuff like that. Anyway, that's what happened. Whenever I go into my mind and, and ask one of these creatures to, to present itself, when I first see it, it's like a spheroid ball of prismatic energy, prismatic energy. But when I ask for a form, they take a form that they say formulates in my mind. So they become that creature, and that's the creature they'll always be unless I change it. By saying, well, I'm going to change your appearance a bit. Because a couple of these creatures have what you call, let's just say mutate. But that's not how they look at it. They don't call it mutation. They have come out in one form. And, and then maybe I might be drawing color. And then I say, hey, I think I'll add this. So they have to adjust their structure to, to accommodate the picture. Because see, with them, if they need a pair of wings, they simply... Grow a pair of wings, and when they don't need that pair of wings, it's reabsorbed into their body. And this don't mean that they change their mass. And it's like, okay, if you take water and you pour it in a glass, that water takes the shape of what it's in. Now, if you suck some of that water out, the, the, the water in the glass ain't gonna change as far as how it looks. It's just gonna change the volume. But with them, it's different. When they change their mass, I mean, when they change their form, if they sprout a pair of wings, their, their form don't really change as far as being different, it simply comes out and their body accommodates for the for the changes. So when the waves are reabsorbed, their body might reformulate into that mass. 
So that's how that works. So I'll tell you more about it later. Till then, peace and harmony.